So now let's summarize what we covered during this lecture. So let's talk about instructions and memory. We saw instructions and they follow this basic pattern of operation, destination register, source register, source register. A canonical example is add R2, R3, R4, which stores into R2, R3 plus R4. We saw how some of them have constant values. So the immediate instructions, add I, which can have a constant in it. And we saw how in load word and store word, we can also have constant offsets. And we saw how they're used in the processor. We also talked about memory. Particularly, we talked about the register file. It's 32, 32-bit words, and R0 is always zero. And we talked about memory on a 32-bit machine is 4 billion bytes. We talked about this distinction between words and bytes. We talked about how MIPS used word-aligned loads to load 32 bits, or a word, from memory at a time. And we talked about the issues of aligned and unaligned accesses. So here's the word-aligned view of memory, where all of our bytes are here. And we saw how that if we have an aligned access, for example, zero, it lines up nicely with the word-aligned address, and unaligned accesses don't. So this one spans across two words. We also went through how the processor works. So we have our memory, we have our register file, we have our ALU, which does our computation. We talked about how we have a program counter that holds the instruction address, tells us which instruction to use. That we load the instruction or fetch it from memory and store it into instruction register, which has our current instruction. The current instruction is then decoded by the control logic. And this control logic tells the rest of the processor what to do. It tells the ALU what operation, tells the register files which registers to read and write. The ALU is going to execute the instruction that the control logic tells it to execute, and it gets the data from the register file. Finally, it's going to write its results back into the register file. We saw we needed a few other things to access memory. In addition to that, the control logic is going to update the program counter with the next instruction. To access memory, we need a memory address register, which holds the address that we're going to read or write into the memory, as well as a data register, which holds you the data being sent to or received back from the memory. So this is the basic idea of the processor, and from understanding this, you should be able to understand the instructions that you need to program a MIPS processor.